Happy Friday, everybody. It's me, Jessica, and I'm here with all my amazing pets to guide you through today's yin yoga practice, which is going to focus on exercises for the lower half of the body, a lot of hamstrings, hips, there's some inner outer thigh, there's work for our feet and ankles. We got about do 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 do. Uh, two minutes until we actually get started. So I encourage you to get up, get away from your desk, gather the props that you're going to need for today's class. Uh, and whatever props you, Fred, that's me, whatever props you want to gather are really up to you. But I say, have a lot of stuff around. If you need it, great. And if you don't need it, then you can always just put it away after class. So for me, that means my bolsters nearby. I've got a meditation cushion. My blocks are right over here. Um, you might want to have a strap as well. We're going to get started in two minutes in child's pose. There won't be any actual water breaks during this class, so please feel free to grab a sip of water, though, if you need to. Do your best to take those sips of water as we transition from one posture to another so that you're not uh, using water as an excuse to come out of a posture to discontinue your stillness. Yay. All right. Just going to finish making sure everything is working. One handy. Excuse me. Gonna make it smell nice in here. For me, that's one of the great opportunities of being yoga, putting on some air freshener element to encourage me to take the deepest breaths possible. Which also means finding something I can use to make the space smell nice. And if you're a little paranoid like me, then you don't have to keep this delightful, smelly element burning during class. Because maybe that doesn't help you to relax if you've got a candle burning or a little incense going and you're worried that someone's going to knock it over. Make your space smell nice ahead of time. And then put it out. Oh my gosh, it's that magical time. Let's do this, y'all. Alternately, I like to keep a candle or incense in the sink, and that way you don't have to worry about it as much. It's a little trick I learned thanks to Hanukkah. Okay, so we're getting started today in child's pose. And that might look different for everyone, and that's okay too. Maybe you want to do a closed leg child's pose. Maybe you want to open your knees nice and wide. Maybe you checked out um, the suggestions for ways to really open your hips today. And you're going to come a little bit more into a frog style child's pose. Remember, this is just our first opening asana or posture. So take it easy on yourself. Going to take this block. And this pillow and I'm going to relax into and onto them. So we're going to spend a delightful four minutes here. And we've already gotten started. So really think about it as we're going to spend a little over three minutes here still. Come into a stretch that you find you're not going to 
fidget too much in. So the stretch should be noticeable. Um, I'm feeling this big time in my shoulders, in my arms, in the lats with my arms stretched all the way forward and a little in the lower back. But remember, you're doing what's right for your body today. So if your shoulders are aching or hurting or you know you can't hang out here for three more minutes, then start with those elbows bent. Make sure that you're not in such a deep stretch that you're like tensing and muscling through it and holding your breath. Breath is number one. Asana and posture is number two. It is normal to feel some shaking, some trembling. Throughout class, as you're creating those new openings, connections, awakenings within your body. So don't be scared. When you do notice that quiet in your mind, use it as an opportunity to start from the top of your head and scan all the way down towards your toes and ask yourself, can you relax or release a little bit more? So we got some hip opening here, especially with those knees wide, if you have your knees wide. You have the opportunity for some shoulder stretch. You have maybe a little stretch in the low back. But what can you relax here? You can relax your fingers. You can relax your toes. Finding one spot to either focus your eyes or close them. Relax your eyes. Relax your mind. Release your breath. Very normal as you take this pause in your day for yoga, for other outwardly thoughts to start to creep towards your brain. And as they do come in, think of your mind like a blue sky and each thought is a cloud. And allow that cloud to just gently pass through. Back to blue skies. If you still find yourself distracted by thoughts, fears, concerns, <clears throat> work meetings, conversations, whatever, tuning into your breath a little bit more can be a big help. Personally, I like to count the length of my inhale and count the length of my exhale. And no, I'm not counting exactly per second. I'm just aiming for a count of six working towards six seconds in six seconds out and with time you can increase the length of your breath so that in the future when i say we have one minute left you know approximately how many breaths it takes you to get to the end of a minute for me i know that a big pause at the top and the bottom means that especially if i'm relaxed and enjoying that relaxed breath i can take about three breaths per minute However, when we're in a stretch that's a little bit more challenging, I notice the restriction in my breath, and then I can only take maybe like four or five breaths per minute. So just working to slow things down. All right, great work here in our starting posture. We're going to sit ourselves up. Next, we're going to come into butterfly. So if you already know that it's a big time challenge for you to sit on your glutes, with those legs open, I want you to lift yourself up on a prop. So if your knees are all the way up towards your chest or your shoulders, lifting up on this prop, ah, it's going to make it a little easier for you to open your hips. You can still take a nice gentle lean forward. I'll stay up here. Why not? Next, we're going to go for butterfly with some massages of our feet. So not, not the most yin of postures because we're not really completely still. But I want you to create as much stillness as you can. So still quieting our body. Maybe you still close your eyes or find one spot to focus your eyes. Maybe you decide, you know what, this prop is not for me. And you remove it and that's okay. So start just around the arches of your feet. Work into the soles, work towards the, the top, the balls of your feet. 
just finding any, any spots that feel tired or tense. Maybe you give a little love to each of the toes. We've got two more minutes here, getting this opening of our hips. Um, and I like this foot massage because it's kind of a little, a nice distraction from the hip opener. Find that relaxation in your shoulders. Keep that breath slow. Great work, everybody. I hope that felt so good, like such a nice treat for yourself. Next up, we're going to go for a little bit of a single leg hip opener, uh, but still giving some attention to our toes. We're going to create space between each of the toes by turning it into a zipper. So if you can bring your foot up onto your quad, great. And if not, you can always just keep it close to the inside of your thigh. If your hamstrings are really tight, having one leg extended in front of you might feel uncomfortable. And maybe the block is a little too high for you to sit up on. So simply folding your towel or maybe finding a, a lower pillow to sit on, any sort of a lift can decrease the pressure that we're feeling towards the back of the leg. All right, so next up are these zipper toes. Do the best that you can to like hold your own hand with your feet. I, I know we've done this before and I've mentioned one of the delightfully weird things about myself is that I have webbed toes. So I, I can't get all the way in between all of my toes and that's okay, we're just doing our best. Getting a nice bigger hip opener. Um, than we did before with the butterfly. I'm also working to bring the sole of my foot closer towards my hip and bring my knees a little closer together because I know that I already am pretty flexible, but if you're not quite as flexible as me, maybe you have a lot more of a figure four going. Maybe you even need to bring a hand behind you for a little bit of an assist. We're gonna hang out here for one more minute. Another thing I really like about this stretch right now is the pressure that I'm creating with the top of the foot into my quad is helping to relax that quad just a little bit. So relax your shoulders, shoulders, upper body is relaxed. Take a gentle draw in of your abdominal cord to keep your back feeling good, especially if you have a gentle forward hinge going. Just breathe it out. Find that one spot, focus your eyes or close them. Remember, if your eyes are moving, your mind is moving, we're creating as much stillness as we can here.
On that next exhale, carefully release your delightful hand holding with your feet. Let's go ahead, extend both legs out. Wow. Take a moment, windshield, wipe your legs, bob your knees. Find what feels good for you. Just shake out any tension that you're you're feeling that might have built up either obviously or secretly. I felt I felt that when we released. I really felt the blood flow. Did you? All right, let's come into our zipper toe on the other side. I'm a lot tighter on this side, so I know I can't quite get the sole of my foot up towards my hip crease, and that's okay. Doing our best to hold hands with our feet. We've got a full two minutes coming up right here. So maybe as the two minutes go past, one of the few opportunities where I am encouraging you to deepen your your little tie-in with those feet. And if you're feeling really tight and that knee's coming up towards your chest a little, that's okay. I'm even going to bring my opposite hand towards the outside of my thigh, give myself a little massage right here because, you know, we're starting off class with just some, a little massages, some attention. little self-love. Isn't that what yoga is anyway? Some, some quality self-love. If you haven't set an intention for today's class and that feels good for you, do it. Think about why you showed up today. Did you show up primarily for the mental aspect of slowing down your breath? or the physical aspect of creating some openings. Maybe a little bit of both. Maybe there's something on your mind that's just like weighing heavy and you truly are here to love on yourself, whatever reason it is that you came today. I, I hope that as you scan your body here at the beginning of class and notice how you feel to start, that when you scan the body at the end of class, that you feel better. Even if all you did was show up. Even if you lay down in Savasana the whole time and just breathe. I, I've 100% shown up to classes before. Don't look at me like that, Uncle Buck. And I just laid there the whole time. You can be the Uncle Buck of this yoga class and just, just chill. All right, let's get ready. Let's see if we if we enjoy that sensation of the blood flowing back through that we've cut off just a little bit by taking this bend of our knee by a little bit of pressure into our quad. Go ahead and release that cross. Another opportunity to bring your hands behind you for some support. Windshield wipe or bob those feet. And next step, we're going to come into dragonfly. So opening your feet as wide as feels good for you. And if you want, you can still have your hands behind your back if you need to, or you can bring those hands forward. If it feels good to release yourself down to the floor, go for it. But start off, find that length first, and then find that forward fold. Oof, when I found that length just now, Oh my gosh, did that increase the amount of stretch I was feeling towards my inner thighs particularly. You can do what feels good with your feet. Maybe they want to fall in. Maybe they want to fall out. Maybe toes flex towards your face. If you want to actively get a little more stretch in your calves or toes pointed away from you. Uh, the point right now is just to enjoy that stretch in the lower body and relax your upper body as much as you can. So. Maybe you're using some props. Props, 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 props for everybody. We have about a minute and a half left right here. One minute left, scan that body head to toe. Where can you bring relaxation? 
frequently, if we are in a stretch that feels uncomfortable, you, you might notice that you make a weird tense face. You know, I, I do. <laughs> so relax your face, relax your jaw, relax your tongue, relax your hands, your fingers, your toes. If you fold it forward, use your next exhale to gently lift yourself up. We're going to come onto all fours, and you might want to bring a block with you next for this next one because we got big toe stretch coming up. Um, if you find that kneeling is really uncomfortable for you because we got an, a kneel coming up our way, sitting on a block can help. We're going to tuck those toes under, though. But you can always sit on a block, whether it be low or high. It's going to allow you to get a little bit more um, range of motion, but a little bit less pressure. So maybe you can stay here for longer. If you don't happen to have a block, taking a towel or even a rolled up sock right behind the knee joint can help you to, to surprisingly feel a little bit more flexible than normal. So we got two minutes coming up starting right now. So walk your hands back to the point that feels good for you. You can keep them on the mat. Remember, you don't have to use a block. I'm just going to keep mine here because it feels good for two minutes of toe stretch. So for this one, I do want you to create as much stillness as you can. This is one of those postures that I talk about where maybe it starts off and you're feeling good, but as the time goes on, what you thought was a great, just noticeable stretch turns into a painful stretch. And if that's you, carefully release to exit out and find a new spot that you can stay and breathe. So relaxing that upper body, really tuning into your breath right now while you're feeling a little uncomfortable and using your breath as a form of relaxation. So not reaching for your water not fidgeting around. This is not the time to fix your costume or your hair or to pick lint off of whatever. This is the time to be still and breathe. You've got less than a minute to go. I'm so excited because on our next exhale, we're going to gently come on up. Bring your hands back down to the floor. Move your prop to the side. Keep it nearby, though. Untuck your toes. Take a moment. Just tap your feet. You can wiggle them side to side. Ooh, just tap the tops of the feet, the toes onto the floor. Maybe shake it out just a little bit. Feels so good. Next up, we're going to come into an ankle stretch. So I'm walking my knees a little bit closer together. I'm starting to walk those hands back to bring those hands. Oh, hey, buddy. Behind me. And you have a couple options right here. You can press the tops of your feet, your shins into the floor. Also, big quad stretch happening right here. And you can bring it back towards those ankles by lifting one knee and then the other. Now, if being all the way back is too much for you, those props that you have nearby, hi, Uncle Buck, you can always just lift one knee up and then just lift the other knee up. 
We're going to spend one more minute right here. Uncle Buck, you're going to spend just about 23 more minutes sitting on the couch. And then I'm going to take you outside. So can you go find your stillness as well? That would be awesome. You can, you can sit here if you want, but I know you don't want to. Oh, you're, you're a nice guy. What a sweet treat. All right, so just alternating between stretching one ankle and then stretching the other. So again, you can have those hands down on the floor. You can have those hands behind you. You can be bringing that quad stretch into the party. This is your party, though. You're the you're your own personal host of a yoga party. So you get to serve whatever serves you. It makes you happy. All right, walk those hands back forward. We're going to come into a more of a stretch for the calves, for the hamstrings. So take a moment, tuck your toes under. Keep those props nearby, actually. Let's walk those props to the front because next up, we've got a dangle followed by a squat. These are going to be our longest holds of the day. So starting with hands on the floor, tuck your toes under, send your hips up towards the ceiling. Take a moment to just pedal through those heels in down dog. You can, you can be a super close down dog, more of like a dangly down dog, or you can walk those hands forward. It's okay if your heels don't come anywhere near the floor. Find what feels good. I like to press all the way up onto the balls of my feet, drop my heels from one side, drop my heels to the other, get a little bit more of that stretch towards the um outer glutes also oh and let's come on into the dangle so walk your feet to your hands or your hands to your feet generously shift the weight into your heel and rather than just reaching down towards the floor with no support at all either placing some blocks on the floor so you can place your hands on the blocks or Really bending your knees as much as you need to to make a nice, delightful, supportive table for your belly. Relax your head down. So you're looking down. Um, maybe you're stretching your eyes by looking truly down towards the floor instead of the wall behind you. But do your best to relax and release those wrinkles out of your neck. Take a couple more breaths right here wrinkles out of the neck and next I want you to check in and notice where your shoulders are are your shoulders creeped all the way up towards your ears creating a little extra rounding in your back it's normal use your exhale create some space shoulders away from ears maybe that brings a little bit more stretch into the lower back check back in with your feet where's the weight let's bring it to our heels we're just gonna hang out one minute down three minutes to go Take some really big breaths and notice the back side of your body expanding. So creating a little extra space through the back sides of the ribs. Do that total body scan. Did your shoulders creep up towards your ears? Did the weight creep back into your toes? Is your belly still gently engaged to keep your back feeling good? I hope the answers to two of those questions were no. And that the last question was yes. Final two minutes right here. Remember, it's normal if you feel any trembling or shaking on the back of your legs. We're creating a stretch. Stretching can be uncomfortable, and sometimes it feels great. It should not be painful. So if it is painful, straighten back out a little bit. Or maybe bend your knees a little bit more. you got to find what feels good for you. If you're having any trouble with that, if you need any one-on-one -on -one help, please reach out. I'm so happy to help you find a way to make this work for your body.
final minute right now. All right, next up, we've got a squat. So you're going to heel, toe, heel, toe, your feet out a little bit wider. I like to have my heels still on the mat, but the toes pointing out and gently sit yourself down. Still got my hands on the floor, bringing my elbows towards my inner thighs. And I like to have my thumbs on my chest here. Now, good news, bad news is we're spending a whole three minutes here in squat. But remember, it's in, so you don't have to muscle through it. I'm going to go ahead and bring a prop right underneath of my glutes to sit down. And I'm still getting a giant hip opener. If staying in a squat doesn't work for you, if you don't happen to have a block, I encourage you to just sit yourself down on the floor, open those legs nice and wide, bring your knees into your chest. You can use your hands to lift yourself up. You can still feel that big opening of your hips. We've got a little over two minutes to go. So decide which one of those works for you. You can always have the block on the, the higher lift. And you're creating the opening that works for your body today for the next two amazing minutes. It's okay if your heels don't come all the way down towards the floor. We're just working towards making change. Find that one spot. Relax your eyes. Relax your mind relax and release your breath scan your total body head to toes Last big inhale and exhale here. And after this exhale, we're going to release our hands to the floor. We're going to make our way back into tabletop. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Yay. We made it to tabletop. Give yourself some cat cows right here. Find what feels good for you. Maybe you want to stick with traditional cat cow really pressing into those hands pops I like to shake I like to shake my cat and cow bring that little extra bit of love into my shoulders oh my god feel big time pressing into my hands palms bringing the shake to my upper body from cat and then shaking that cow's tail Finding a little bit more range of motion right here at the very end. 
Next up, we're going to come into a nice calf stretch. Still a little bit of mobility for those feet. So nice neutral tabletop. So no sinking of that back, no rounding. Find that nice straight back. Keep those eyes down on the floor, gently in front of your fingers to begin with. And then send one leg behind you. Just one, your choice, which one you'd like to get started with. Uh, just like we did for that big toe stretch. Curl those toes under press through the ball of the foot if you want to take a moment to just gently rock back and forth to work into creating a stretch on that calf of really uh, pressing your heel towards the wall behind you once you feel that little calf stretch we're going to hang out here for just about 30 seconds then we're going to change it up a little bit make sure those hands palms are still about underneath of the shoulders if it's too much on the wrist lower yourself down onto your forearms elbows underneath of your shoulders Oh, that brought the stretch back into my hip and hip flexor. All right, for our last minute here, whichever leg you have extended behind you, take an inhale, lift it up, and gently cross it over to the other side of the mat. Find that calf stretch again. So press the ball of the foot into the floor, stretch through your heel. And then we're just going to look over the opposite shoulder. So as you look over the opposite shoulder, you're pressing the hip of the leg you have extended to the wall away from you, creating that amazing total body stretch. Make sure you're not sinking into those shoulders. They're not earrings pressing through those hands palms. Feel a lot of awakening, opening, happening in that upper body, shoulders here as well. My arms are just a little bit trembly, so if yours are too, it's okay. All right, let's start by turning our head back towards the center. Use that big inhale, lift that leg up, and then bring it back through till tabletop. Shake it out for just a second. Give yourself another cat cow if that feels good. It does. It does feel good. And let's go ahead and get the other side. So plant the opposite knee down into the floor. Hands, palms underneath of shoulders. Extend one leg behind you. Tuck the toes under. Then you rock back and forth to begin with. Make sure you're not wearing your shoulder earrings. Pushing those hands, palms into the floor. Or remember, option to come down onto your forearms. Let's hang out here for the second half of the first minute. So I'm still pressing into the shin, the knee of the foot that's down into the floor. Great. Let's initiate that side body stretch on the opposite side. So on your next inhale, lift that leg up. Cross it over gently, still pushing into your hands, palms. We're going to look over the opposite shoulder. Last minute left right here. After this, we get to relax and release down onto our bellies. So keep it right here. Keep breathing. You've got just under 30 seconds left to go. I know this, this one creeps up on you just a little bit. Like I said, my arms are really starting to tremble to find some stability here. It's not going to depend on what you were doing throughout the rest of the week, too, which of these postures you find to be the biggest challenge. All right, let's come out opposite the way we went in. So take that big inhale, find your length, exhale, head back down towards the floor, inhale, lift that cross leg up, uncross it, and exhale, draw it back in towards your belly. Next up, we're going to come down onto those bellies. Let's keep our props to the side for now. You might want to have your strap nearby, though, depending on how tight you are, because we're going to come into a quad stretch on our bellies make sure you have some space too we're going to extend our arms out to the side 
uh, in just a moment. So first things first, just come on down to the floor. Make a little pillow with your hands. Place your head on your hand pillow. Bend your knees. Let's windshield wipe those legs. Gently right and left. A little bit more opening towards the outside of the glutes. A little bit of a release of any pressure or stress in that lower back. And we're going to keep one leg bent or we're going to extend the opposite leg forward. So if you're feeling really tight, now's the time to put your strap or something if you can't reach that back foot. I have the same arm of my bent leg reaching back towards the foot and I'm using my opposite hand as a nice pillow on the floor. Starting with my thumb towards my toes, I'm going to turn my hand so that my hand palm is towards my pinky toe bend the elbow and then work to bring the heel close to the glute now to really activate the quad next up you're gonna squeeze the glute gently stretch through your knee so there's a little pressure of the quad itself into the floor but mostly a squeeze of the glute a stretch of the knee towards the back of the room think about this as the standing uh, bent knee quad stretch and this is a great example of how really stretching that knee down behind you as if uh, almost the similar way that we did the ankle stretch but on our bellies can help you to access that quad a little bit god i hate the way it sounds when i say the word quad all right we got one minute left Ooh, this is a lot this is also challenging, too, because I feel a little pressure from my hip itself coming into the mat. We got 30 seconds left. It's, it's very bearable. Hopefully, you feel the same way. Feel a little activation of the, the upper body back lots, helping to just hold on to this bent leg. And on your next exhale, we're going to carefully release. Extend the arm to the side that you had holding onto your foot. Bring your opposite hand that has been a pillow underneath of you. Let's roll over onto the side. Get a nice little side body stretch. You can keep your legs stacked. You can bend your knees. You can keep that bottom leg extended, open uh, in a little bit of a clamshell. And if you walk your supporting hand away a little bit further, you can get your upper back and shoulders a little bit more into the stretch. Let's hang out here. Just a couple of breaths, winding things down here at the end. If you open those legs in the clamshell, let's close our clams. Let's extend both legs, roll back over onto our bellies. Let's start from the beginning. So once again, coming into alligator, making a pillow with both hands under your forehead, bend your knees, windshield wipe your legs. Release any lower back tension that built up while we're down here. And then this time we're going to keep the opposite leg bent, opposite leg bent, extend your other leg out. You can still keep this delightful pillow of your forearm. You can switch the strap to your foot. So as you're pulling your heel to your glute, you're also actively squeezing that glute. So the quad starts to lift up off of the floor and then really stretch your knee towards the wall behind you. Getting a little bit of a shoulder opening as well. Find what feels good with your hand. Maybe you prefer to keep your hand palm closer towards your big toe as opposed to rolling it or turning your grip towards your baby toe. Maybe you're just holding onto that strap. Maybe you even have the strap on your foot and the strap is right over your shoulders and both of your hands are right here. Keep breathing, keep being, doing your best. We got less than a minute to go.
All right, release your grip, extend both legs out, arms come out to the side. Pillow hand comes right by your chest, and we're just going to roll over onto the side. Get that side body stretch. Remember, you can keep your legs long. You can bend your knees for a little bit more stability. You can clamshell your legs open to bring the stretch more towards your low back, and you can walk that supporting arm away to just extend the stretch through your lats. Breathe into it. This is our last stretch before we're going to turn over and come into our final savasana. Or maybe you decide you're just going to stay here on your belly and enjoy your final savasana in your, on your belly. I think that sounds nice, and I just might do that today. Hold on, I was starting to be so relaxed, I was drooling. All right, if you clamshelled your legs, let's close our clamshell. Let's extend those legs back out. Let's bring extended upper arm in for support. We're going to gently roll over onto our bellies. From here, if you want to push yourself over onto your back, you're more than welcome to. Or you can stay here on your belly. Get a nice little stretch of your neck. Go ahead. Look towards one direction. Allow those shoulders to open. If you're on your belly, palms face up towards the ceiling. Breathe. Another big opportunity to send your breath to the back side of the body to feel those back ribs expand on your inhale and contract on your exhale. <laughs> and if you find yourself so relaxed that you're drooling a little too, welcome to the party. <laughs> it's okay. So we're enjoying a total of three minutes of savasana together. However, if you have extra time and you can stay here for longer, I encourage you to. Being mindful of our three minutes together, though, if you're on your belly and you're getting the stretch of your neck, I want you to carefully inhale, lift yourself up, and turn your head to the opposite side. For our last minute and a half of savasana, just bringing the stretch to the other side of your neck. No judgment. I can't get this ear as close to the floor, and that's okay. This position reminds me of those old school Febreze commercials where the mom sprayed up her like stinky teenage child's room and then the floor just smelled good. She like gets down on the floor and smells it. But on the contrary, my mat, my mat could use a little Febreze or some time in the washing machine. But you know what's on point? my relaxed breathing, and hopefully yours too. Also, my drooling. My drooling right now is fabulous. Great. Well, that's all the time that we have together today. You're welcome to stay down here on the mat and continue to en enjoy your final savasana. Or if you want, press yourself up. We can hang out for one more minute and close practice together. So coming into the seated position of your choice when you get there, let's take a really big breath. One more stretch. Inhale those arms. All the way up overhead, hands, palms come together, and exhale, bring those hands down to heart center. Bring your thumbs to your sternum, elbows hanging low and heavy. Take a moment, tuck your chin to your chest, bow to yourself, bring a smile to your face. Thank yourself for coming. I'm so glad that you came. Till we meet again, 
Remember to think good thoughts, speak good words, eat good foods, do good deeds, nourish yourself from the inside out. And it's not too late to sign up for our next fitness challenge. It's a journey through January. You've seen maintain, don't gain before. So please join us if you are looking to mindfully eat and for some assistance through the holiday season. If it feels right for you, bring your thumb up to your third eye, your drishti. Inhale, lift your chin, your chest, your elbows up towards the ceiling. Open up your heart and know that the light within me honors, sees, and is so thankful for the light within you. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and let us say namaste.